Thank you so much, and, and I want to thank our great friend and our uh, great leader from the state of Maryland for continuing her hard work. I wonder if she ever wakes up in the morning and wonders when it's ever going to be done, when we're going to see justice. And I think she's, she's learned over the years that um, until you stand up every day and live that life and live a life where you're trying to make positive change in America, um, it doesn't get done. And, and she's somebody who has never given up. You know, I, I think it's interesting because North Dakota, like West Virginia, is one of those states where actually women earn less than men and below the national average less than men. But when you look at the national average, 77 percent, that is a horrible, horrible statistic. But you know what's really horrible? It's really horrible if you live that statistic. Not one person in this body lives that statistic. We're all treated equally. It doesn't matter, you know, what gender we are. If we are members of Congress, we're treated equally. Can you imagine what the outpouring of sympathy and support would be if we got 77 percent of a, of a male salary? I mean, we would think that's atrocious. We would think, how could that possibly happen in America? But it happens every day in America. It happens every day for working women who are supporting their families, women who go to work 40, 50, 60 hours um, to, to support their families and to uh, improve the economies of their state. And they keep spinning their wheels. They keep working at trying to change this and don't seem to get any further ahead. How many of us could take a 25 percent reduction in salary? And that's really what we're asking every woman in America to do, not across the board, but certainly, on average, every woman in America to take a 25 percent reduction in their salary. That is not fair. And it should not be the facts of 2014. It should not be the way things are. You know, we've been a lot of discussion around the, the, the opportunities for women, and obviously we've grown. You, know, you can't see 20 you, women in the United States Senate and not think that we're making some progress. But we have to think not only about those women in professional occupations, but those women who are our school cooks and our janitors like my mother, those women who are working every day at the diner to put food on, on the table, to, to put food on their family's table and food on the table of their patrons. And so when, when we're talking about this, I also talk about the need for an increase in minimum wage, which I know is... Uh, is a topic for further discussion on the floor. But I'd like to remind my fellow senators that the current minimum wage, which is, we all know, overrepresented by women, the number of people earning minimum wage, overrepresented by women, is less than 9 percent, is less than 9 percent of a congressional salary. And we have people in this body who think that the, the salary that they receive is inadequate, but yet, we expect people to work 40 hours a week. If you, even if you had two of those minimum wage jobs, think about it, working 40 hours a week, two of those minimum wage jobs, you still would make less than, uh, than $32,000 a year, working 80 hours a week. And that's the story of very many women in this country. And it used to be, you know, when we were growing up and women were in the workforce, they were working for you know, for that extra income, or, or, or there was this excuse given over and over again, well, she's just supplementing the income, and the man's the bread earner, and she's just earning a little extra so she can buy a new refrigerator or whatever it is. That's not the reality of, of today. The reality today is that more women are the primary or the sole breadwinners for their family, and we have got to correct this problem. Now, I've listened to the debate on the other side saying, you know, there's, there's other ideas on how to do this. This, this won't uh, uh, promote or, or give, uh, give a, a way forward for um, uh, change. You know, these are the same people who think if you just maintain the status quo sometimes or somehow, things will magically change in this country. What, what would suggest to us? after 20 years of this struggle, or 30 years of this struggle, or 40 years of this struggle, what would suggest to us that we are going to get parity if we don't take some pretty proactive action here in the United States Senate and the United States Congress? To say what a woman does is valuable, and it's at least as valuable as what a man does. 
in the exact same job. And that's who we are as a country. We are gender neutral, and that's what we're trying to do right here, is maintain our gender neutrality, maintain a great economy, because we know if we put more money into those women's uh, uh, family budget, that money is going to go out and it's going to grow our economy even more. But at the bottom line is let's have a little sympathy in this body for people who earn less than 20 percent of what a United States senator earns. Let's give them a show of support, a thank you from a grateful country for the hard work that they put in every day, and let's tell them that those words in our Constitution and that promise of equality is still, still not realized, but we can work together to make that a reality in their life. Thank you. I yield the floor.